Good morning, guys, or is it a good morning? 355 days of the year, sleeping next to my boyfriend is wonderful. It's a pleasure and honor, really, but the other 10 are just not ideal, and last night was one of those nights. Basically, if he has any kind of congestion or allergies, or if he's sick, he will just snore the night away, just nonstop snoring right in my ear, and last night was one of those nights, because this beautiful spring is upon us as I search for, are there flower? No, I don't even see flowers outside. It is hitting his sinuses, the allergies are out, so is the snoring, so yeah. I mean, I don't wanna say I got no sleep. Obviously, I did sleep, but I certainly was awoken quite a few times, and then I ended up just getting up a full half hour before I was going to, just because I was like, I just need to get out of this nightmare. Today, though, is a very exciting day, especially for Zach. It is his first day of work at Local 12. I don't really know what is on the agenda for him, because obviously, like, your first day is always just a little weird. Like, you're just kind of getting used to things, you're getting introduced to things. So let us go up to the apartment and see what's on the agenda. Zach's getting ready for his first big day of work. I told him, wow, you look so cute. And then he said he's going to walk like, in. Just act like I'm showing up for my first day of like a modeling agency. Just like walk in, just be like, is this a Ford modeling agency? I'm here. I've uh, arrived. <laughs> <laughs> he does look so tan right now. I'm so jealous. This is like probably the worst part of our relationship, how pale you make me look. Yeah, now I was at my buddy Sam's bachelor party. We went golfing on Saturday and I didn't have a hat and it was sunny. First day of work essentials, we've got the passport, face masks, some good old sunnies for your modeling debut. <laughs> I've arrived. <laughs> oh, but the vlog wants to know, what exactly are you doing? Because we are in a work from home state still. Obviously, you can see I'm still home until June 1st. So why are you going into work? What's going on? I'm going to have to take my old computer back to my old work and then go get a new one. So I think I'm just picking up equipment today, doing the paperwork. And then I've got video orientation from 1 to 2.30. Good luck. Big first day. Guys, something monumental is happening right now. I don't think you're ready for this. I don't even know if I'm ready for this. I don't know if it's a fluke, but we are putting the snow boots away. We are locking them up for a full season. I think we're in the clear. I've already had multiple false alarms where I put away the snow boots in March, thinking, all right, it's spring, we're good, we won't need them, and then I needed them. Yeah, this winter has seriously just sucked. It has just been the absolute worst just with the extreme cold and then the snow i mean we normally do not get that much snow in cincinnati and we had that one snowstorm that i vlogged so most of you guys know about it we just got way more than anyone predicted. I mean, I went to bed and the predictions were like this much and I woke up and it was like up to here. Like, I don't remember the exact amount. So I'm just giving you like a little uh, little picture analogy. But that was crazy because our meteorologists got attacked for that. Like people were being so mean, meaner than I've seen people in a while about snow. Just angry that the meteorologists got it wrong and didn't tell them it was gonna snow that much. Of course, what meteorologists do is science. It's all rooted in science, but it's freaking weather. Like you're never gonna be 100% right 100% of the time. It is the most unpredictable thing. And it just makes me so mad seeing people's ignorance. Like people saying our meteorologists should be fired and they don't deserve their job. Like, do you wanna take it? Because for as much as what they do is about science, it also is so much about their personality personalities? Can they ad lib? Can they segue? Can they connect with the viewers? Like meteorologists are some of the best on camera people and a huge reason why people might tune into one station instead of another. So yeah, anyway, that was insane. There's a party downtown. Someone says that you're coming by. mistake you always pick me up and let me down we're spinning around losing our minds damned if we do damned if we don't damned if we give in what we want and i always pick all right i am now up
up from my nap and I've got to say Zach coming home with this entire setup maybe not the most ideal situation <laughs> Not my fault. No one told me it was gonna be this little chunker. Why'd you get a freaking computer? The station's out of laptops right now. Wow, I guess they only give it to their best employees. You guys see that right there? <laughs> who, 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 who got a laptop? Clancy, who got a freaking chunking, hunking computer? Yeah, it's faster. There's a bigger screen. Wait, let me see. I have not sat in front of a computer in so long because obviously we have computers at the station but i haven't been into the station in so long actually that's a lie <laughs> i was in the breaking news center on friday <laughs> and i was at a computer but still this thing's huge it's hard to tell on camera but look at it compared to our table like if you like yeah like it's so hard to tell <laughs> this is like we don't have a table where i'm gonna be having to eat at the island or here there is a nice little option over there for the couch let's hope this is only for about a month and also guys as you can see zach came home with dark chocolate and flowers what did i do to deserve such kindness i'm not sure what you did to deserve such kindness you just feel like being kind no you're just so amazing dear i thought you deserved a little flowers and chocolates it's funny because I think I got it in the vlog when Zach came home with the flowers. I was so confused and I was just like, what the heck? Like, they gave you flowers at work and I got it as I was doing B-roll for the montage. Well, they gave you flowers? Huh? Wait, you got a computer too? I got you flowers. <laughs> Wait, what? I stopped when I got you flowers. They obviously didn't give me flowers. <laughs> they gave you flowers. You got me flowers? Wow, was not expecting this. I'm supposed to just like sit, you know, like a vase and be nice instead. <laughs> it looks like that. <laughs> <laughs> not as good. All right, YouTube. So just wrapping up my first day here from remote. It was good. I was able to go in and see the office today. So I had to go pick up my equipment. That's where I got my nice big computer. It's nice to have. To work on not nice when you live in a one bedroom apartment and the den is consisted of all of clancy stuff it's gonna be an interesting transition the next hopefully four or five weeks i'm hoping they they said they're gonna get some laptops in that would be nice to be able to transition to, to one of those a little bit more mobile when clancy's sleeping a lot of times i don't like to work from the apartment Sorry, I just burped, uh, or more so hiccup. I don't like to work out of the apartment in the afternoons if I don't have to, so she can uh, not have to hear me talking. But yeah, no, first day was good. Got to meet with HR, and I got to meet my manager, and he showed me around to where the salespeople sit. He showed me the newsroom, so I got to meet the face of Local 12, or the faces of Local 12. So Sheila, Bob, and John, I have met Sheila before. They were all very nice, as you'd assume. But yeah, no, I, I'm excited to get going on this. I really think this will be a good fit for me. We'll, we'll give you some more updates as I uh, progress the next few weeks with this and I'm sure it'll be uh, it'll be a wild ride and now Clancy and I are officially co-workers so she can't get rid of me or I can't get rid of her. Well this vlog is taking a turn that I was not expecting. Yesterday I got my vaccine which I didn't even vlog because I thought it was just going to be the most anticlimactic experience ever. I thought they were just going to stick a needle in my arm and then my arm was going to be sore and that was going to be it. Like I didn't think it was I, I just, oh my gosh. Before I say what I'm going to say, I first want to make something very clear. And it's that I am 100% happy I got the vaccine. I would get the vaccine again in a heartbeat and I am not discouraging anyone from getting it. As a matter of fact, I'm doing the opposite. This is something that is proven to save lives. And if a doctor, someone who has studied science for years, who knows so much, is sitting there telling you, hey, if you do this one thing, it can save one life or two lives, I don't understand how you wouldn't do it. And the fact that there are people sitting there and telling us we can save millions of lives it's just it's a no-brainer i really want to make that clear that i don't want this story to scare anyone from getting the vaccine but i do think it's important to be transparent because it is now friday i got the vaccine tuesday and this is finally my first full day bouncing back and i'm kind of just like confused i feel like there have been warnings like hey you might get some side effects but I don't know. I feel like it's not really that talked about. And I think transparency 
is extremely important. So I'm going to be that for any of you who have not yet gotten the vaccine that, hey, this might happen to you. You can see me right here. I am fine. I am 100%. <laughs> I'm not 100% just yet. I'm going to be 100% though. And it was so worth it. But anyway, to back up a little bit, I got the vaccine on Tuesday. And specifically, I got the Johnson & Johnson, which is the one shot and you are done. And I was so excited that I got that vaccine, which by the way, you don't get to choose. I mean, getting a vaccine is not easy trying to find the appointment. So I just looked online, saw, hey, they had openings on Tuesday. Just so happened to be Johnson & Johnson and I booked it. I went to my local CVS after work to get my shot and I wasn't nervous at all for any side effects just because I don't know, like I had heard, oh, okay, you might have some body aches. I, I don't know, I, I guess I just didn't really think about what that would mean and how that would make me feel. Like I just thought like, oh, a couple body aches, not that big of a deal. What I was really scared about was the shot. I mean, I just don't like shots, who does, honestly? I got there, I sat down and the pharmacist told me straight up, he says, this is gonna hurt, I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna pinch. And I kind of made like a uh, face like that. And he said, hey, I just, I wanna be honest. And I said, you know what? I need transparency, I need honesty because there's no point in being shocked. And he did it. I do have to say, yeah, it hurt. It felt like someone just punched you in your arm as hard as possible, but then it was done. And he did tell me, I don't know how you're gonna react to this, but you could get pretty sick. You could feel a little bit bad. Everyone's different. And when he said that, I was like, oh, okay, I'm not gonna be one of the ones who gets sick. Like, you just never think you're gonna be one of the ones, you know? You're just like, oh, you know, I'm fine. I made it through the past year without getting COVID, which I don't know how. I mean, obviously I could have asymptomatic. I don't, I don't know. I didn't take an antibody test, but it kind of makes you feel a little bit invincible. And I know I'm not, and I know I shouldn't feel that way, but you do sort of feel that way. Like, oh, okay, I'm gonna be fine. When you get your vaccine, you have to wait inside the pharmacy or wherever you get it for at least 15 minutes just to make sure there are no side effects just because that has happened to some people. Incredibly rare though. So as I'm sitting there and waiting, and to be honest, I was so bored sitting, so I just got up and started roaming around CVS and just looking at the things they had to buy. I was like, wow, this arm is in agony. Like, I'm not gonna lie, it, it hurts. Like, and I was trying to Google, I could not find any answers. Why does this vaccine hurt so much? Like I've gotten, you know, my tetanus boosters and all other kinds of things. I don't remember the pain being this bad, which to this day, it's still hurting. But it was fine, it was whatever. Went home, ate lunch, went to sleep, and then I woke up at around 6.30. I ended up sleeping for four and a half hours. My mom texted me saying, hey, how are you feeling? And I was feeling totally fine at that point. I mean, that was what, six or seven hours after I got the shot and my arm was in pain, yeah, but who the heck cares about arm pain? I mean, that's the least of my worries. And I was feeling fine. Fast forward just 30 minutes, you know, I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. I kind of feel like my neck is hurting and my body's hurting a little bit, but wasn't really anything too big of a deal. Then I turned on the oven to go make dinner and that's when I was like, huh, that's weird. I kind of am starting to feel like absolute crap. Like what the heck is happening? And by the time my dinner was ready and I sat down, I was kind of just like, this is not, this is not it. I, what is happening? I'm, I'm feeling like my body's like falling apart right now. Basically what was happening is my fever was hitting. I made the decision. Nope, I'm not gonna do Tylenol. We're just gonna stick this out. I don't like taking Tylenol or any of those over the counter medicines or any medicine uh, for that matter. I had a bad experience one time where I accidentally overdosed, took too much vomited, convulsed, wasn't good. And it was a total accident. It was someone else administering it to me and they just didn't realize the amount that they were giving me. But it took about 15 minutes after I said I'm not taking Tylenol for me to go into the cabinet and take some Tylenol because I was like, things are just not good. From there, things just progressed. Even with the Tylenol, which I took one extra strength Tylenol on the bottle, I do have to say it says the dosage is two, so I did not take a full dosage. The Tylenol did not make a difference. My fever, which we don't have a thermometer, so I can't tell you that I had a fever, you know, with the number, like I can't tell you for sure, but I know myself, I know my body, I haven't experienced it in years, but yeah, what was hitting me was an incredibly rough fever. And I experienced, I'm just, I'm not gonna lie, like one of the worst nights ever. I don't handle these situations well, but it just, it was so miserable. The body aches were insane. And that is what kept me up at night where I wanted to go to sleep. I was exhausted. I was exhausted just from working, just from, you know, waking up so early that day. 
I couldn't go to sleep because I was in too much pain. I was at first shivering and our apartment was 79 degrees. Zach obviously wanted to turn on the air. I mean, he had come from a workout and it was 79 degrees, yet I was shivering. And I know I'm a naturally cold person and I know I naturally keep things very warm, but I don't normally shiver in 79 degrees. Like for my teeth to be chattering, that's obviously weird. So we go to bed and at this point, I still plan on going to work tomorrow and I really wanted to go because I was doing a story that I really liked and was interested in and it just stinks to have to cancel on that. And I had to cancel on so many things. Like for me to not go to work and call off work was so not an option for me, even as I was laying in bed and Zach was putting a weighted blanket on me. Cause I was like, please like help. And then another point I was just sweating. I turn the air down all the way to 70, which if you know me, that is like unheard of, I don't do that. And it was just a sleepless night of pain. And I, I can't even explain it. Like I know right now I'm just saying it like, oh, my body hurt, it doesn't sound like a big deal. It was agony. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I was crying. Oh, and another symptom I didn't mention, and this is really what was making things awful is it felt like I had the stomach virus as well. I didn't end up throwing up, but it just, I felt like I was gonna puke all night. And at one point, this is how I really knew I was sick. An old childhood trick of mine, whenever I had the stomach virus and my stomach hurt, nothing in the world mattered to me because I was so upset about my stomach that I didn't tell my parents I was going to throw up and I would just end up throwing up everywhere, like all over myself, the couch, like I just didn't care. And I was laying in bed and Zach just got the Tylenol and he got into bed and I was gonna ask him to get a little like garbage basket for if I was gonna puke because I really felt like I was going to. But then I had the distinct thought, you know what? I don't even care if I throw up all over the bed. That's <laughs> so bad. Zach, can you actually, can you attest to any of this? <laughs> the real question, Zach, is how do you feel now that this was the first time Zach had to deal with me when I'm sick? I warned him since like the day we met, <laughs> I do not handle illness as well. And when I come down with one, it's gonna be the test of our relationship. And I am so blessed that I have really not been sick since we started dating. The only thing was a really bad sunburn that I was a baby with, but how would you describe how I handled this illness? You handled it poorly. But, <laughs> but if it, I mean, if you felt that sick, it makes sense. I was telling Sam and Lindsay last night, you've said before you don't handle illnesses very well, which is fine because whatever, if I need to get you food, if I need to get you medicine, if, whatever, I'll do all that stuff because I care about you. But the second I knew it was really bad is when you missed work because yeah. you're a workaholic. So that was when I, the second that you missed the first day of work is when I knew you were feeling really, really bad. So that's when I was like, okay, she's in rough shape. I feel bad for her. Obviously I was trying to do like, whether it was get you dinner or medicine that night or whatever it was, I was trying to help, but there's not a whole lot I could do. So as I was crying and moaning, were you like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. I could tell you were in rough shape, so I felt bad. I mean, I think we handle, like, uh, when we feel sick a little differently, but... Guys, I literally was like, mm. <laughs> And then I always do, well, I guess I always, but it only happened once before with my sunburn. I will ask Zach, like, what percent will I feel tomorrow? Like, what percent better? And it's as if, like, Zach's word is gospel to me. And I remember, do you remember the number you told me? Like 65. 65, and I was, like, <laughs> hanging on to it. I'm like, 65. But it was, it was just the fever. Like, I'm tell fevers are out of this world. I wish I knew what temperature I was. Oh, and the big thing is because we only had me as the morning reporter. I was the only morning reporter. I mean, it, this is how it is two days of the week just because we are short staffed. And for me to call off, that is so not good for the morning team. And that is like so selfish of me and horrible. And Oh my gosh, that that's what was causing me so much anxiety of like, I can't call off. And in my head, I'm like, but Clancy, you have to. And then I'm like, no, you can't. Like, you're gonna let everyone down. And I'm like, but you are dying right now. So I texted my boss saying I can't come in, but then I like just threw the phone away and didn't look at it because I didn't want to see the response. I had a nightmare that night that I got a text back saying I let everyone down. How could I call out? And that everyone started emailing me. And then I woke up in the middle of the night and was like, oh my gosh, is it true? And I checked my phone and it just says feel better. I obviously feel horrible that I did call out and I didn't just call out one day, I called out two days, guys. I mean, this was rough. She said she's feeling about 90% today. She's getting back on her feet. Back on good. the feet. Remember the day after my really bad night, I'm like on the website trying to schedule you. <laughs> yeah, she's a monster. You would think like, oh wow, Clancy's on the website. She cares about Zach. She, she really wants him to get vaccinated as well. Like that's really sweet of her. 
No. She wants me to go through the pain <laughs> equally, so I know what it's like is why she was on. I'm like, Zach, they have an open appointment. Laura. And by the way, the other way I knew I was really sick was that I actually woke Zach up in the middle of the night to get me Tylenol. And I cannot emphasize enough how much I would never do that to wake someone up. Like, how horrible is that? But gosh, like, I physically couldn't get up. And so the last time I was this sick was actually my freshman year of college, Super Bowl Sunday. Like, I have not been that sick since then. And I don't even know if that was as bad as this. It was a really, really, really miserable night, but then it passed. By the time I woke up the next morning, I took another dose of Tylenol and I was feeling okay that day. So I'm not great or anything, but it's just from the peak of that sickness to, you know, when I woke up the next morning, it just was not comparable. And I can deal with a little fever and, and something that's managed by Tylenol. It was just so weird that like the Tylenol did not work and it all hit. It's interesting because I've been reading that young people with healthy immune systems seem to be getting hit harder. And all of the people that I've interviewed and talked to have been older because those are the people who were eligible first. Those are the people that I was interviewing in the beginning. And I really haven't talked to many young people about the experience. So I just wasn't prepared. I was just listening to so many people who are telling me, oh, it just, you know, hurt my arm and then I was fine. That was not my experience. And by the way, I don't mean to sound ignorant because I, trust me, I knew these are side effects that could happen. It's just one of those things where you just don't think it's gonna happen to you. Now, all I'm really dealing with is a sore arm. Right only this morning, I had a cough attack, which was very awkward because I was talking to someone, an interviewee, and not on air or anything, but I was trying to like explain, I'm not sick. like. When you have a cough attack in front of someone in the middle of a pandemic, it's a little bit worrisome. I was trying to explain like, this is a side effect from the vaccine, I'm pretty sure, like I'm not sick. It was like a weird like tickle thing in my throat. I say all this to you guys though, to be transparent. And that to me especially is really important. I'm someone who has had, I guess what you'd call like health anxiety. If I don't know all the details of something, it can really, really freak me out. Ever since seventh grade, I ate a cashew nut, almost died. I mean, it sent me into a spiral of anxiety where if I felt the slightest thing wrong with my throat or like a tickle or anything, oh my gosh, I would go into full-blown panic attacks. Seriously, did not leave my house for a year besides going to school. Like I just stuck by my mom's side or refused to leave. So I just do think it's really, really important to be transparent with people and say, hey, this might happen to you, but you're gonna get through it. And actually one thing that really, really, really upset me when I was laying in bed feeling awful and just honestly crying and just being a little wimp, just thinking about all of the people who experienced COVID, who were feeling 50 times worse than I was, who were struggling to breathe, that never happened to me at all. I mean, really 50 times worse than I was. And yet they had no one because with the pandemic, people couldn't visit hospitals and they truly had no one. And I can't even imagine that. Yeah, I mean, I am so happy I'm fully vaccinated now and I'm so thankful. And if one little night of, oh man, that just wasn't the most fun is all I have to do to experience normalcy and to help save lives because we don't wanna reach herd immunity by people getting COVID, you know, someone like me, I would likely be able to bounce back just cause I have a healthy immune system. But what about all the people who don't, you know? So. We want people vaccinated. You might have a crappy couple of days. That's okay. Get some chicken noodle soup as I did. You're gonna be just fine. I am curious, let me know if you have gotten your vaccine yet, which one you got, how old you are, and what your experience was. I'm curious about the age groups and also the vaccines. I have heard of bad side effects of the second dose of the Pfizer and Moderna, but the Johnson & Johnson I've been reading up on, some of these effects are pretty, gnarly i think it might be because it's just like a one shot like putting everything in you at once definitely let me know in a comment down below because i am curious but with that i'm gonna go hopefully rest up i'm gonna be good as new probably by tomorrow so i'm really excited for that and thank you guys so much for watching